what we've got here is on the left hand side that's on the top in the top that's a depth map colorized depth map with uh, red meaning that denoting points that are close to us and blue those that are far away of course intermediate colors representing intermediate distances uh, and on the right hand side you'll see a point cloud that I can rotate and you can see three-dimensional representation of the whole world. Oh, cool. uh, contrary to LiDARs, uh, what you can see here in, in our point clouds, I'll maybe make it a little larger once we leave the, the parking lot. Uh, you're the first group, so we're still in the parking lot. We'll start the next tours there. But already here, you, you should be able to see the whole structure of the world. A lot of stop and go, obviously, because Munich is very busy. And so, I wanted to show you the, the point cloud first. It should reflect what you see in front of the car. And we can rotate it. And you can see every single structure. So contrary to LiDARs, our point clouds have color because every point comes from a camera and cameras take colored images. Mm -hmm. uh, which is very useful for perception algorithms because this color carries semantic information present in, uh, in the scene. So what you see here is this colorized depth map with uh, with color-coded distances and every point in the scene I can, I can, for instance zoom in on the car you can see it's 13, 12, 11 meters in front of us and we're, as we're approaching it it's getting closer and closer and that every point has some distance assigned to it. Uh, we're using 5.4 megapixel cameras so at the input to the algorithm we have two such images which gives us 11 million uh, points as an input to the, to the system and based on that we create uh, 5 million measurements on every frame. Currently running on this, on this laptop at 20 frames per second that gives us around 100 million points every second. Uh, for comparison, state-of-the-art LiDARs provide around 500,000 points. That's two orders, more than two orders of magnitude difference in the density of points. And that density of points translates directly to the size and resolution of objects that we can detect. What I wanted to show you is this bird's eye view that is the, the basis for our grid detect, uh, for, for object detection. What you see here is the bird's eye view of the whole scene. Uh, on the right, this is the truck that we're approaching here. And in front of us, you should be able to see the barrier here. Uh, and now people crossing the street, those are those small uh, dots that are detected as, uh, as, well, as potential obstacles that we shouldn't be driving over. <laughs> which uh, I try not to. Which I think is very thoughtful. Thank you, Berger. <laughs> uh, part of the output is also velocity. Here it's called denoted in, in colors. As you can see, these are the, the objects on the, on the side of the road. The, the car is here, a pedestrian crossing the street. And color denotes uh, the, the direction and the speed of, uh, of the obstacles. As we start turning, uh, this color will change into, I suppose, that way that will be green, because that means that the world is, is turning, uh, turning bright relative to us. When we run, uh, drive forward, the car being, oh, that's something I should say. We imagine the car being here on the left-hand side, facing facing forward, and we're driving in this direction. That's directly present here. And this object here, the car we're approaching, should be in yellow. Uh, it's, it's moving towards us. And now we're turning. This is the, the object and velocity map that, that we obtain. It's better, it's, it's easier to understand for humans in this, uh, in this view. Uh, and here, soon we'll see those pedestrians crossing the street. Right here, two guys crossing. Um,
Yes. So that, in a nutshell, is is the system that uh, that we're building. 